four. <laughs> so porcelain panels. Okay. Porcelain panels finally made their way into the box stores. Floor and Decor being the first one to carry porcelain slabs in their stores, okay? I walked into my local Floor and Decor, well, one of them, because we have four now, and just to find out they have a display of only porcelain slabs that are beautiful. And the prices range anywhere from $9 a square foot all the way to 25. And this is just the beginning. You know, I think the more and more time goes by, they're gonna just get more and more selection more varieties. So in this video, I'm going to run down the basic process of installing these slabs. And let me tell you, it is not the same as installing regular porcelain because these are big and you have to take a lot of other things into consideration other than just, oh, it's just tile. Okay. So first off is you need to use a really good thin set that is modified. Okay. In the training that I took, they use Multimax Lite, which is a no sand thin set so basically it's like whipped cream when you mix it and it's a really good thin set it's pretty expensive but it's you know it's like top of the line thin set and this is what you have to use for these porcelain slabs second of all you have to use a, a certain type of trowel there's two kinds the there's the marshalltown uh tile freak one which is kind of uh, on an angle you know it, it's it's kind of like a three eighths by a quarter but they're all on a slight angle, maybe like a 22 degree angle. And then there's also the Euro, uh, Euro, Euro trial notch or Euro notch trial, something like that, but it's, it's Euro something. It's kind of wiggly. So it's also kind of like a quarter by three eighths, but it's, it's wiggly. And uh, the difference in these trials from regular trials is that these are supposed to not need, you know, when you set regular tile, you put it down or you put it up on the wall and then you wiggle it. And that's what kind of gets the the ridges collapse and then you get 100 percent coverage or 95 well on these slabs you don't have that room once you put that slab in place you know we're talking a five foot by ten foot piece you cannot wiggle it like that's that thing is just not moving so these trowels are supposed to not need that wiggling motion in order for for the thin set to get full coverage because they are in a little angle so when the piece sets then you automatically, by pushing it into place the right way, um, you get the, the right coverage, right? Now, pushing it, pushing it into place is another thing. You can't just set these pieces on the floor or the wall and then just start stepping on it or hitting it everywhere and, and just expecting that this piece is going to sit the right way. You're trying to get all the air pockets out. And how do you do that? You do it in a cross motion. So first, you do the center. You go forward, back, then back, forward. You end up in the center again. Then you go left, right, and then you go right, left. You end up in the center. And then you start working yourself in quadrants. And same thing. You move yourself a little bit to the right. You go back and forth a little bit more. So this is a motion that any air that's trapped in the middle will eventually work its way out to the side. Okay? And this is very important because if there's any air trapped in between, you know, in, in like say in the middle of the piece, eventually that air is gonna still stay there. So it will be a void and you know, that piece will become weak at that very spot. Eventually you could have issues, uh, it, you know, especially if you have that void towards a corner or an edge, this could be an issue that could lead into breakage and you don't want that, okay? So we've covered three things, thin set, trowels, and way of setting. Also, if you're setting more than one slab, you're gonna need clips. Uh, you know, le leveling clips. There's a huge variety of leveling clips. In this class that I took, they used uh, uh, LPM or something. There's some green ones that's like a three piece, but honestly, you could use whatever leveling system you feel comfortable with already. Uh, and you want to use them pretty close because these slabs, you know, they're going to require maybe a 16th of an inch grout joint at the most. And you want that to be super flat. You don't want to have to you know, lippage from one piece to the other and then slice your foot across because they, they can be installed on the floor. Make sure you understand which ones can be on the floor, which ones have to be in the wall before you go on and, and just purchase your slabs. So we've covered four things right there. Um, another good thing is you need that rack with the suction cups to move these things around. There's no way around that. Yes, you could move it by yourself, but you're most likely going to break it because you're going to create tension. This thing's they're so thin and so large that they will bend. And when they bend too much, they will snap. 
And if they snap, they, they're really, really sharp and you could get injured. So do not attempt to move it by yourself if you do not have one of these racks. They recommend to do it in between two, three, or four people, even if you have a rack, because you have to take into consideration that you're gonna be moving through doors, uh, hallways, and you know up the stairs. I mean, a bunch of things. So make sure you buy one of these racks. The more suction cups on the rack, the better, because you leave less um, sections free and that they could bend and break. So definitely look into a rack. Uh, there are several kinds and several brands. Just do your research and buy a good one that's gonna let you move this material from the you know to the garage into the cutting station and then into the bathroom. Okay. Another one is good blades and hole saws. So these slabs, if you if you have to cut a, a rectangle on it, um, they're so thin. You have to, there's a process for cutting. You cannot just take the grinder and cut these things off because you will create weak points. So what they taught us is if you have a square or a rectangle, you're supposed to pilot holes on the corners and this releases the stress on the piece and then use your grinder from said holes, you know, from hole to hole and then create your, your shape, whatever shape you, you're doing. If you can, or if you want to install the piece, mark where the rectangle is and cut it the next day when the piece is dry they also recommend that, but you need a really good blade in order to cut this. I know Monolith has a blade that's special for thin slabs. Uh, I, I don't remember the name right now, but they have one and it's really good. It's real thin and it works perfectly for slabs. Also, the cutting can happen with grinder, but you know, on a 10 foot span, they also have these score and snap tools that you can just use to, to create slivers or cut slivers off of the piece. Uh, same thing at uh, this class that we're using old monolith piece uh, tools and they have the FL3 which is the flashlight 3 pretty much is it's kind of a think of a, a track saw but with the score and snap uh, diamond so you put the, the the track where you need to cut and then you, you score and then you snap with some pliers um, you know depends on the thin ones you're supposed to snap and they have a mesh on the back so then you have to cut the mesh on the back but these tools are gonna make your life a lot easier because cutting a 10 foot line that is super straight with the grinder by hand is gonna be kind of a struggle. They also have tracks with little handheld saws that have water attachments. So those could work great as well. But of course, you know, since we were in a hotel that, uh, at this class, they didn't uh, demonstrate this type of tool because it would have made a mess. Uh, these are meant to be used at a shop or outside. So I think we've covered everything. Really, if you're embarking into uh, a remodel and you think you're thinking of using these slabs, do your research and find a good, decent installer that's at least taken a course or two on the installation of these slabs. Definitely don't attempt it yourself if you've never done any tiling, uh, if you don't have any tools, because by the time you buy all, buy all the proper tools, you might as well just pay someone who's reputable and knows what they're doing. And also remember, these slabs are you know, even though they're say the $9 per square foot piece, you're talking a bunch of square footage per piece. So if you mess up one cut or if you break one piece, there goes a bunch of square footage, which means translates into a bunch of money. So you have to be really careful transporting, moving and as an installer, if you're an installer, you're watching this video, when you're pricing out one of these jobs, you have to take all these things in, into consideration. You might have to buy tools that you don't have already. You uh, definitely have to look into the slabs being delivered to the job site so you don't have to transport them in your car or your truck and then you break them in the transporting to the house and then it becomes an issue. So you have to think of all these things before you give them a price um, and definitely charge enough because you're gonna waste a bunch of time, especially if there's a bunch of cuts to do for shower valves, shower head, niches, uh, you name it, you know, this could be a really easy piece to install if it's just a rectangle wall with no cutting, no openings. But if you're doing a whole shower with benches and stuff, it could become a really big pain in the butt. So make sure you're on top of that and good luck if you're attempting it. And um, this is just the future. So you got to get ready for it.